I'm Lauren with IndoorGardening.com and today we wanted to do a click and grow update. About a month ago we did a video here on our YouTube channel all about our Smart Garden 9 that Click and Grow kindly sent us and all of the wonderful accoutrement that they sent as well. Lots and lots of plants. We set it all up. You can watch the original video right over here. And today we just kind of wanted to do an update on all of that. And this is just a follow-up, an update on having a Click and Grow garden and actually using it, utilizing it, and how the daily workings of it are. Today we want to talk about the harvesting process, switching over the pods, and then the routine maintenance that has taken place over the last month or so. So for the last month or so the routine maintenance has been very very easy. Once we planted our little pods in there with all of our little seeds we just kind of checked them every single day and the timer just came on for its set amount of time and then turned itself off. We didn't have to do anything with that. Filled up the water reservoir one time in the very beginning when we first set everything up and then we filled it up one more time a couple of days ago just because it was starting to run low. It hadn't even emptied all the way yet. In order to see if it needed to be filled or not I just regularly tapped the little spout there and it kind of bounces and lets you know if it sits all the way at the bottom then that means it's not floating in water anymore and then it'll float all the way at the top when you have the reservoir filled with water. So that's how you can tell whether it needs water or not. It should last for 30 days on average in the summertime, maybe not as much, but it should last 30 days on average especially in normal household environments. Ours definitely lasted about that as well. Another thing that we had to pay attention to after we planted our little seed pods was you cover them with a clear little humidity dome and that traps all of the humidity in there and helps the seeds sprout. So once the seeds sprouted I did wait until the leaves were on the actual dome itself and made sure that they were mature enough in order for the dome to be removed. So you can see here that one of the little strawberry plants actually is still too tiny for the dome to be removed while the other two were big enough so I took the domes off. Today we're going to go over the harvesting process. What we are harvesting today is this lettuce that has completely grown absolutely bonkers. It's gone insane in here which is so cool. It's gone so large and we we really pushed the limit. It should have been harvested probably about a week and a half, two weeks ago. But we really wanted to experiment and see how long it was going to be able to thrive in this particular environment, how long the nutrients would sustain it, etc. Uh, it's definitely not meant for long-term permanent solutions without extra fertilizers and stuff in there. There's only so much nutrients in each little pod, so it definitely needs to be harvested and eaten. And it overshadowed the strawberries because it grew so quickly. That's another thing to keep in mind when you're layering in your different seedlings. Consider what's going to grow a little bit faster and what's going to grow a little bit slower, what's a lower bushier plant, and what is a taller plant that's going to be blocking light, whether they need more light or less light. Strawberries need more light, so the lettuce did not help by blocking the light that the strawberries were going to receive. And we're just going to kind of pop everything out, and we're going to pull out all of the little pieces here and unroot our plants. So you can see they have a lot of healthy roots, which is absolutely awesome. And then we're just going to be refilling our little setup over here and grow some more. We're going to leave the strawberries in because they need a lot more time to mature. We're going to be replacing our other two varieties of plants with tomatoes and basil. So I want to see we kind of want to see how quickly the basil will grow and how quickly the tomatoes are going to fruit and we'll see if the tomatoes and the strawberries can kind of fruit at the same time. This has just been such a fun product and checking the plants on a regular and watching them grow has just been so amazing to watch. Really learning the limits and how the system works has been incredibly fun as well. Highly recommend it. And as you can see replacing everything is just super easy. Swapping out the plants is super easy. Harvesting the lettuce. I could have chopped this lettuce and then allowed it to continue to grow a whole new set. I could have gotten two or three different sets of lettuce that I really wanted to harvest this out. But everything has just been 
so easy care, so low maintenance, other than paying attention the first couple of days with the domes, um, and then just checking on it periodically, making sure the water is good. Like I said before, we've only had to water it once since the initial watering when we did our video before. So this is a fantastic product. The only issue that I can come across is that the plants are so happy they actually outgrow the product. So you do need to remove them and up pot them and that encourages you to make more space for more plants. So you have a finite limited amount of time that they can actually be in that which is really great because then we get to actually shuffle them around. We can grow more or we can chop it back and then periodically harvest it. We know it's going to continue to grow like with the lettuce. But overall, we're still absolutely thrilled with it. We do have a link down below and you can use our coupon code and save some money on it. And you can read more about it on indoorgardening.com. There's lots more information there and we're always happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!